anyway, we have graphed all of these, right? Can you guys tell which one is which? So let's do one at a time, right? Which one is which? <laughs> Shall we? <clears throat> Obviously, all these are in the same family, right? They have much in common. What do they have in common? They have the same domain, same range, same y-intercept, same x-intercept, which doesn't exist. But each one individually, they have their own specific details, right? The devil's is in details. For example, a virus that grows at base two exponential is gonna be a bit, well, somewhat sm a slower than a virus go grows at the you know, exponential base E, right? So you can see from this picture, the different rate of the different base will have different consequences, even though they're in the same family. They have lots of in common, but they have different details. For example, let's mark these curves, right? As soon as you see these curves, you know these are exponential, right? How does, how does a, 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 you know, biologists know that, like for example, a certain virus grows in exponential exponentially because they plot the points. They plot the points. Does that sound familiar? At different time, how many of the same virus has become, right? And from that, they determine, of course, you know, they would try to predict the population of the, of the virus after a certain time. So they have some initial observation they observe for a long time and they realize oh this is going to be exponential growth with base 10 or base 5 base 3 right but each one of these different bases will cause in numbers at a certain time the number of virus will be absolutely different will be absolutely different okay I don't know if you guys might, might be interested in to investigate what kind of growth is the current coronavirus, right? I personally don't know, but if you want to find out, I'm sure there's some, there might be some more readings, okay? But just for, for our purpose, for, for this class, okay? Let's, let us be able to identify which curve are these. So the purple one is what? What's the purple one? You will look at the points, right? Input one, output two, input two, output four, input three, output three, uh, output eight. So this will be what? What would that be? 2x. 2 to the power x, right? Sometimes you may not be given the points. You're just given, you're given the, um, you know, well, you have to read the point. In that case, of course, the graph is graphed nicely, which, which can be done, which can be done. All right. What is the next one? Mm -hmm. E to the power of x. Sorry? E to the power of x. That's right. Very good. The green. 3 to the power of x. 3 to the power of x. Wonderful. You guys got it, right? See, we did it 2 to the power of x, e to the power of x. We didn't really do 3 to the power of x and 10 to the power of x. But from the way we did it, Okay, I hope you guys would do the rest of them and you know do three to the power x, ten to the power x. But even from the process, you can already tell, right? So now, what's a blue? 
10 to the power of x. 10 to the power x. Okay. I want you guys to study these materials because this semester, uh, even though we're, we're finishing up exponential, I might throw in a quiz when we are doing trig about exponential. Okay, so this is this is done. It's done this way because I want you guys to review. I want you guys to review. Okay, so let's look at the logarithm part. Let's let's look at the logarithm part. Okay. Let's look at the logarithm part, guys. Let's start from the top. What is the base of the logarithm in purple? Wouldn't it be log base two of x? Yep. How could you tell? You check out a couple points, right? These points have been marked for you. So you can tell. Right? Now, how about the black? A little of X. Sorry? A line of X for the black one, right? That's right. A line of X. Very commonly used in your calculus class. The green. Base what? Do you have a chat message, Professor? Three. Yep. Very good. The last one, but not least. Useful, you know, earthquake measurement, right? Blue. Base was a base. That's right. Log X. That's it. You see, I actually arranged them in color coordinated, right? They're color coordinated. And each pair, they're inverse function to each other. They're inverse function to each other. <clears throat> Okay, so now um, I'm going to put this away. I'm going to put this away. Okay, just be warned, these may come back as a quiz in, in the, you know, next week or so. Okay, and uh, so this is putting them together. We know that for these two functions that was um, you know, we have summarized all these properties. And, and, and of course, I also have given you guys the perks, right? So let's put the perks together, right? They have the same domain, same range. And uh, let's look at the calculus related um, thing that we, ha we have not put in the table. So let's review that part, right? <clears throat> F of X can be any one of these. Okay, any one of these, maybe I should do this. I should do or, right? Any one of these. And uh, it's inverse could be any one of these. They are one-to-one, -one, they have these correspondence. And at the end points, right? Let's review this. As X approaching negative infinity, what happened to f of x as
as x approaching infinity, right? As x approaching infinity, what happens to f of x? Okay, so we ought to put the pictures in there, right? We ought to put the pictures in there. You, have, you guys have the picture, right? You guys have the picture? This is the picture. We've done those pictures, right? What a amazing experience to have done that. how basic it is, how easy it is to do, how easy it is not to do, but we did it, right? So these pictures and the related details are absolutely important to us, okay? All these different rules, all these different rules, all these different perspectives, okay? I want to, I, I, I set the stage because I want you guys to immerse in this, in this process. Okay, so you're gonna be, uh, sorry, did I, did, I, did I turn it on, turn it off? Okay, sorry, I uh, accidentally, um, you guys see the pictures, right? Yes. So the input output a setting. The F, right, the F of X, we're gonna use these for something amazing. Very useful in calculus too. Okay, so one of the properties. Okay, we'll derive something very useful for your future classes. All right, are you guys ready? So let's fill out the table with the, uh, you know, the, the behavior of the function at negative infinity and positive infinity. Can you guys give me the answer? Because I'm, I'm doing the recap. I'm doing the recap with you guys, okay? As x approaching negative infinity, what happened to f of x if the exponential functions are considered? They all gets lower and lower and lower, right? At this tail, right? At this tail. I never touched it, never touched the x-axis. Can get, uh, get close to x-axis as close as possible. I, I'm, I basically get you guys started. Are you guys awake? We did this, didn't we? Maybe in your other class, Professor. Really? I didn't do this class, didn't do this with this class at all with any one of those? Um, probably your notes can help us answer that question. Okay. All right, so I'm going to move the table this way. There's no response, so I, I need to make sure you guys are following me. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna insert the row here, two rows. I'm going to cut and paste it here. Okay, so these two are something you're gonna use in calculus, but I don't want you guys just to memorize it. Memorization is not gonna help you. You have to understand it. What it means for, for X is approaching negative infinity. After we have done all of these, these seem to be just so naturally observed because we have seen it. Remember I mentioned that X, as X approaching, as X getting smaller and smaller, what happened to the curve? The black dot, for example, is getting lower and lower and lower yet, but right from the table, we see that it's very, very close to zero, but never touched zero, didn't it? You guys follow me? Yeah. 
So these are the graph. And what happened to the, to the dots we plotted? Okay, Farouz just mentioned that, you know, as X getting closer and closer, getting smaller uh, and smaller, right? You see, for example, E to the power X. When the input becomes negative one, negative two, negative three, getting closer and closer to, to if negative infinity, which is this concept, right? Negative two, maybe here, negative three is even further to the left. The negative 1000 is way over, right? What happened to the output? The output is, is still positive, but larger than zero, but closer to zero. Do you guys follow me? Mm -hmm. And the, these are the tables you guys have seen, right? You, you, you saw this table from two to the power X, you saw this table as E to the power X, right? Is everybody with me? Yes. So that's what we're talking about. Okay, so if I, if I have an input of negative a million, what happened, what happened to the output? The output will be one over E to the power of one million, and that number will be closer yet to zero. Larger than the zero still, but closer to zero yet. So you can keep, you can see this process can keep going and going and going forever as a consequence that the curve will get a closer and closer and closer to zero, but above zero, okay? This is the same process we were talking about. Okay, this is the same process we're talking about here. Okay, so as X approaching negative 1,000, negative 10,000, negative a million and so on and so forth, the, the curve will keep getting lower and lower and lower, but never touch X axis, but getting infinitely close to zero from bigger than zero. And how do we describe that in calculus language? This is what, this is what we do. And of course, there's another notation, okay? I'm not gonna introduce the other notation, but this is also used to describe as X approaching negative infinity, F of X is approaching zero from bigger than zero. So this is a little positive sign on the shoulder Meaning, meaning is larger than zero. You guys with me? So now you look, you, you stand back, you look at that, no, you look at that notation. You look at that notation. You look at this notation. Think about the meaning I just described to you. Isn't that notation pretty neat? So that is used to describe the process I just mentioned. Any questions? Did you get it? Yes? Did you get it? Yes. All right. So let's look at the other direction. Let's look at the other direction. Okay. In the other direction, what do we see? What do we see? as X approaching positive infinity, because we talk about the, the input is horizontal, right? It's a horizontal measurement from the, you know, from the origin. So as X getting larger and larger, what happened to the output? The output will be higher and higher yet, as high as you want, as high as you want like the virus, right? As time progresses, if there's no control, no mask, no anything, what's gonna happen? Everybody will be infected, right? And of course, on, on Earth, we don't have infinite number of people. We have finite number of people. But imagine we do have an infinite number of people then everybody will get inf infected. So that process, okay? So this 
is described mathematically is as X approaching infinity, the number of people get infected will be approaching infinity as well, okay? This infinity, it has the same meaning as a positive infinity. They, they, they mean the same thing, okay? Does that make sense? So these mathematical notations that you are going to use in calculus class is to describe that process. We have already observed, we have seen it because we did it, right? We did it. So now let's look at this piece. Look at this family, right? On this family, can we still do uh, X approaching negative infinity? Can we do that? Yeah. How can we do that? Oh, no, you, no, you can't. So you, can only, you, can only... you cannot do that because you hit the wall, right? We hit a wall. Why we hit that wall? We do, as we, we try to approach negative infinity, what happened? We cannot even be zero. Therefore, we will never be able to reach infinity, the negative infinity, right? So this is, this is why this x equals zero is a wall. We, 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 have, we cannot touch y axis. We cannot touch x equals zero because x equals zero is not in the domain. Therefore, we cannot approach negative infinity. What can we do? We can approach zero. But from which side of zero? If we approach zero from this side, it's called from smaller than zero. We approach zero from larger side, that's from, from larger than zero. How do we express that? This time we approach it from larger than zero. So we put a little shoulder, I uh, put a, a little symbol on the shoulder of the number, meaning we approach this number we're getting infinitely close to this number. We try to get a closer and closer and closer and closer yet, but never touched it by doing this little symbol. Isn't that pretty neat? I thought so, even though I told you I, I, I'm not totally in love in mathematics, but I do appreciate the notation. The notation is beautifully designed. Anybody can understand after just a little orientation. Do you agree with me now? Yes. Right? So th this means, this, what this means, this means exactly what I just described to you. I'm approaching zero, I'm approaching to zero, but doesn't touch zero, but it's always larger than zero, as close as possible. So it's a dynamic process. Look at this symbol. This symbol describes a dynamic process. It's, it's a never ending process. And this never ending process can only be vision, vision, visioned in human mind. No computer, no machine can actually give us that process good enough. I actually saw some pictures, saw some motion pictures that try to express that, uh, which they have done a great job. Okay, actually, I'm gonna show you that, that, uh, that YouTube uh, program, which I, uh, I, you know, I saw some years ago. They try to describe that infinite process. Okay, I think motion picture can do it. But you have to constant, you have, but still that machine is still finite process. When I don't have a motion picture, you know, we just have to do it in our mind. Okay, so that's something I try to convey to you. Okay, so you're gonna be constantly in these dynamic processes the moment you get into calculus. Now, as X approaching zero from larger than zero, you see how I read it? This is how you read it. As X approaching zero from larger than zero. Okay, what happens to the inverse function? What happened to the inverse function? 
So you pick an input from here and the output will be what? Lower and lower and lower, as low as possible. Don't you see that? That's from the picture. That's from the picture. Okay. Then you can say, oh, I, do I understand that, right? So let me show you the, the table we did. The table we did. The table we did, right? Look at the table we did. This is the table we did for E, right? We have chosen input E to the power of negative 10, E to the power of, this is the E to the power of negative one, E to the power of negative two, E to the power of negative three. We can see as we choose, as we choose numbers that are getting, the input are getting smaller and smaller than uh, smaller, but positive still larger than zero, it, it means what? It means what? The input is getting closer and closer and closer to zero, right? Right, so these are the numbers we choose for input, all of them are positive because we cannot choose zero, we cannot choose negative, there's no output. And what is the consequence? What are the output? The output, what happened to the output? The output is getting smaller and smaller from the table, don't you see that? Yes? So the output is getting smaller and smaller and smaller to negative infinity as the input getting closer and closer and closer to zero from bigger than zero. You guys see that? So all you have to do is just observe these two. You just observe the input. As, as input are chosen in a certain way, what happened to the output? And that's the process in the picture, which is gonna be getting lower and lower and lower yet. Do you guys see that? Everybody? Yes. Right? Yes. And let's look at that beautiful mathematical notation with this observation in mind. Don't you agree that this one picture tells a thousand words? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. you agree with me, don't Absolutely. you? Okay. Yes. So now with that process you understood, right? So let's look at that beautiful mathematical notation. It says as X approaching zero from larger than zero, the inverse function approaches negative, negative infinity. I thought that was really sleek. Some simple mathematical notation. Notation is very important, okay? Notation is very important. If you don't understand mathematical notation, it's very difficult to understand the mathematics. So this semester I spent, I have, so far I have spent a lot of time to get you guys used to the notation that you are going to use in calculus. For example, I use f of x almost all the time. Okay, because input output is told from that notation itself. And that's the notation you're gonna use every single day in Cal. Okay, now, so you understand that process, right? So that the other direction as X approaching positive infinity, that's pretty easy to understand. Okay, most of our students get that all right. So I'm not gonna to spend too much time here, but I still wanna point it out. It means, what does it mean? Uh, I'm gonna make this smaller. As X approaching positive infinity, what does it mean? It meaning the input, <clears throat> excuse me. The input is getting larger and larger. What happened to the output? 
the output is getting higher and higher yet. They're going higher for sure, even though seemingly kind of slowly, but surely. Okay, so how do we express that dynamic process mathematically? The inverse function will be approaching what? Cause oh, infinity. Infinity. So now I want you to stand back to look at this, look at the picture. Okay, I want you guys just, just take a moment. Take a moment. You look at the picture on the screen, you stand back and you, you look at the mathematical notation. I have to say, I would say, I would, you would say what? Of course, of course, isn't that so obvious? Yes. Sometimes we don't see the most obvious, don't they? Don't we? Sometimes we don't see the most obvious, which is so true in my life. I was growing this melon in the backyard. Okay, I go that I go to see my melon every. Uh, actually, it's kind of squash. I I I went out to see my squash every day, every single day. But only yesterday, I found one of the squash has grown this big. I, I saw it for the first time. Isn't that so interesting? For that squash to grow this big. And I only saw it yesterday. There's something wrong with my eyes, right? Do you guys agree with me? I just didn't see it. It must have been very obvious for me for days, maybe weeks. By the time I saw it, I picked it. It's a little old, it's a little old but still edible. So we don't want to miss the most obvious. Anyway, without further ado, without further ado. So this table is complete. This table is complete. Okay. And um, I will try to put these together and send it to you. But at the same time, I want you guys to do your own version of them. Okay. And I assure you, you're going to have a collection of these tables at the time you enter calculus. You may find them useful. You may find them useful. So next today, the next thing we want to talk about is that we're going to re, uh, we're going to re-examine the properties we have talked about before, okay? So in order for you to see that, I'm gonna bring back that property. I'm gonna take it over here. I'm gonna take you back, right? Look at what we have done, right? On the function and then it's inverse, right? So that's, the, that's our approach. For inverse function and it's inverse, what property do they have? Do, do we have this guy? Okay, this guy. We have to talk about this, right? And there's an assumption to it. What is the what is what is the assumption? The assumption is F is what? Is one to one, right? F inverse. F inverse is what? Is it's the inverse, right? And it's unique. So this pair is like, you know, the one and only to each other. The one and only to each other. And do these apply to our functions for each pair? Of course. Of course, right? We did it for, so what we did for, for these two functions, f of x, f of x, oops, f of c, f of uh, c, sorry, equals two to the power x, remember what we did, right? And its inverse is what? Its inverse is what? 
log base two of x. That's right, excellent. Log base two of x, right? And we have derived uh, some interesting properties, right? We worked out these process, didn't we? Did we? Yes? Yes. I thought we did. We also have done for what? We've done it for E, right? For E, what happened to E? This is E to the power X, and this is gonna be ln X, right? So all these are pairs, and for three to the power X, log base three, log base three X, and so on and so forth. So we have four pairs, and of course you can create many more, right? So this is three to the power X, and this is gonna be a log base three X. So all these are pairs. Okay, all these are the pairs. And the 10 to the power X and common log X. So these are the pairs. Using these properties, we can derive something very interesting. Okay, we're gonna use just one of the properties, one of the properties. Okay. Yesterday, I gave you the homework for log three. Did you guys try it? Did anyone try it? Yeah? Did you guys try it? Yeah. If you have any questions, just hold off a little bit. Okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna derive something interesting. Okay. We, we declare that these are always true under the circumstances, okay? F is one to one, F inverse is, is inverse, and this is true, and this is true, right? We had our narratives in our whole context, right? Exponential function is an increasing function. Increasing function is one to one. Therefore, the one to one, prop, one to one functions property would apply to it, right? So that means this is going to be true, for example, for this pair. It is true. It is true. Okay, no need to prove it. No need to prove it, it's true. Okay, so just, just read my lips on this one. Okay, so now when we apply these functions to this truth, what do we get? Okay, so let's practice with that, let's practice with that. Composition. This is called a compositional function, right? Compositional function. If I bring back these notations, then you may find these completely familiar, right? Completely familiar. Okay. So now let's get started. And there's an accessory for x in the domain of inverse. So now we are going to put these in details. Okay. We have the general case, and we're gonna apply the general case truth to the special situation. Of course, it's still true. Now, because F inverse is log base two X, so what is the domain of, in, of F inverse? What's the domain of log base two X? We just reviewed. What is it? What is it? I'm, I'm waiting for someone to say something on chat or something to say something. What is the domain for log base 2x? We just, we just did a recap. When I asked you that question, where did you get started? 
You should have the table in mind. You have a picture in your mind. What is it? Professor, you, uh, you are asking domain of the uh, Domain of function. log base two x right here. Oh, log base two x, not the two to the power of x. What's the domain? Okay. For this to be true, you have to identify the domain, right? For this x, because x has been applied the rule of f inverse. So this x has to be in the domain of log base two x. So what is, that's right, okay? For x is larger than zero, right? Any number larger than zero, okay? That's what it means. It can be negative one, it could be, I'm sorry, neg not negative e to the power negative 10,000. It could be two to the power negative 2 million, okay? It could be one over 32. It could be uh, 0 0.0000500 zeros followed by one. It can be all of those numbers, okay? Any number that's larger than zero, okay? Good job, thank you. Now, how do we plug in these? We know this is true. How do we compose the function when we have these things here? Well, first you start from the inside, right? So you have f, what's, what's f inverse? Log base two of x. That's right, log base two x, you just plug in. And now you have, you're applying the rule of f to log base two x. And that's f of x equals two to the power of x. So you're gonna have two to the power of what? That guy. And you're told this equals to x. You guys see that? Yes. So th that's gonna be true. So this is true. So if this is true for this pair, that's gonna be true. Therefore, this is true. So let's observe this truth. Let's observe this truth. The exponential form, okay? If you look at it, just a two to the power of something, this is the exponential form. The base is two. In the exponent, we have log base two. So these two bases are the same. These two bases are the same. And in front of the logarithm, it's a one. Because it's one, we don't have to write it. Do you see that? And X is any number larger than zero. And this is true. Doesn't that tell us something? So for example, if I give you Two to the power of log two to the power of log base two oh I'm sorry the type setting is bothering me okay two to the power of log base two of five what would that be equal to? Five. That's it. You got it. Right? If I give you another one, two to the power of log base two of root two, what is the answer? Root two. That's it. That's it. That's how you apply it, right? The entire log three is about that. It's about applying these properties. But I do want to give you another perspective though, because the other perspective is usually what's been talked about in most of the classes, okay? I introduced this perspective because I feel it's very useful for your composition and, uh, and this, the streamline uh, function concept. Uh, in, 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 my, in the theme of my teaching. The other perspective, 
I think I have done this with you. I have done this with you, but I just want to bring it back to it, right? It's from the function, from the definition. From the definition, right? What's in the definition? Log base B of omega. You see, I'm, I'm trying to get you guys to use these definition over and over again. Why do you think you, I'm doing that? Why do you think I'm doing that? I want you guys to make the connections to definition, to the key concepts. And develop a habit of doing that, which is essential for your success in calculus. Okay, so now on the other side, it would be B to the power triangle equals that baloney. Okay, where zero is less than B, not equals to one. In the, in the case of two to the power, well, from this definition, let's just do it this way. Let's do it this way. B raised to the power of triangle is omega, right? And the triangle, the triangle is the same as the logarithm form. So the logarithm form is the same as triangle. Triangle is the same as a logarithm. So I can substitute the triangle with the logarithm form, right? So I do. So that's what I would do. Boom. Isn't this a special case of that. You guys follow me? Yeah. Do you see that? So this tells you what? It is not only true for base two. It is true for any base larger than zero, not equals to one. So for, it's true for base five, base, base 10, base 10,000, base half, base third, base anything, as long as the base is larger than zero, not equals to one, this is always true. You follow me? So it was like directly derived from definition. Once you have the definition and this, the next one comes naturally, don't you see, do we see that? Don't we see that it comes naturally? All you have to do is just do a little act of a substitution. So did you guys do that on your paper yourself? Could you please do that for me now? Once you've done that, do you ever have to remember this formula anymore? I don't think so. It will come naturally to you. It even came naturally to me. You know how dumb I was, right? To four, te four, te four times to, to pass a driving test. That person cannot be too smart, right? That person cannot be a genius if I have to take driving tests four times. You can do it too. You get it? Yeah? Yes. Did you derive it? I want you, I want, I want these words to go through your pay, go through your fingers. Go through your fingers. Right? How about for base E? Which is gonna be used in your calculus class, right? So if it is true for any base larger than zero, not equals one, certainly it should be true for base E, right? Because E is larger than zero, not equals to one. So when we have E, what happens? Ln omega equals to omega. You're gonna be using this form in chapter three, calculus one.
The only difference you might see there is the, the use of symbols. They might be using Y there. So next, we're gonna select some questions from log three. Okay, we're gonna select some questions from log three. Could everybody look at log three? You should find log three from your notes. Yeah? Did you find log three in your notes? Yes. Okay. I want you guys to arbitrarily choose five questions. You choose, I'm not gonna choose them for you, okay? You choose five questions. I'm say five, I'm gonna use the symbol plus. If you wanna do more than five, great. Questions for yourself. Okay, I'm gonna open the break, uh, the, 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 the breakout rooms. Okay, if you wanna go with the Farouz, go for it. Farouz is ready for you any moment, right Farouz? Yes, ma'am. You, 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 you self, self assign and Do you guys have access to that uh, log three? Log three, log three exercise. Unfortunately, I cannot tell you the page number because I'm using this older version of notes. Okay, in the log session, you just have to flip the pages. I want you to flip the pages every day. Okay, I want you guys to flip the pages every day. To see what's what's all in what's in there, how much we need to learn, how much we need to review. Right. So find that page and start practicing. Professor, I remember from uh, yesterday some of those sample questions was like. Um, LN to the power of, I mean, what was it? E to the power of LN one over pi, for example. Mm -hmm. So those are good example. I can work it out yeah. in the during better okay. Yeah, absolutely. Any one of them where you can create some more. That's right. It's just based on what you gave us. It's just yeah, gonna go click. for it. It's go gonna for click. it. Yep. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, because that's room. something you guys are gonna use in calculus class. I will be in Barricade room one. Yep, just feel free. I'm gonna give you like uh, five, six minutes. One, one question, one minute. And for those of you who stayed with me, if you have any questions, so please don't hesitate. Okay, please don't hesitate. Um, I have a question, but it's based on it's on the other homework though. No problem. It's on other homework. It's on the forty-two A. Oh, certainly. Um, how about we get to that after this set of exercise? Yeah, I was gonna say we can. I can. We can do that later after this. No, no, I, I, will, I will certainly get to your question today. It's just, but I want you to remind me if I forget, okay? So after this set of exercise, so right now, uh, could you please do these exercises? Okay. Okay, then, I will, then we'll get to yours.
I'm going to grab some tea. I'll be right back. Okay. How's it going? How's it going, you guys? It's going good. Good, good. Okay, our time is up. I'm gonna close all the rooms. And then we're gonna to get to Jacob's question. Uh, Jacob has questions on 41A, right? So I'm going to flip the pages. We're gonna flip the pages. Forty one A. It's forty two. I'm sorry? It's 42A. 42A, I'm sorry, 42A, thank you, thank you. So just give me a second, I have found the page and I'm going to just wait everybody to come in and then uh, if necessary, we'll look at the answers for the exercise we just have done. And then we will um, <clears throat> we get to 42A, uh, 42A. All right, everybody, thank you. Farouz, are you back? Yes, ma'am. We are good. Thank you so much. Uh, do welcome. we have any question? That any any question you want me to go over on log three before we get to uh, answer your homework questions? Yes. No. Farouz, do you suggest any questions from log three that I should do in class? Of course, Professor, practice makes it perfect. You know, I believe in that practice. <laughs> of course, I appreciate your help. You're welcome. And um, which one of log three do, does any one of you wish me to do? You can send me a message uh, to, uh, you can send message on chat, you know, to everyone or just private me or, um, or pronto. Yeah? No, no questions? Are you sure?
Okay. Any one of you want the summary table to be sent to you? Um, I will take it. Me too. Okay, so, but but do me allow too. me some time. Uh, it, of course, because the table is here, so it's, I, I can send you right away. But the question is, I have to make, I had to do this typesetting, right? Because I want you to send you, if I send you the, the PDF file, sometimes this table is too big. I may have to break them into, you know, smaller sessions. Otherwise it doesn't fit in on page, it doesn't fit on one page. So I, I will need to a little bit time to play on, on it. Uh, I personally vision myself, I will be doing a lot of these summaries for you. And I will put these tables uh, probably in a, in the, in some documents, uh, typically probably Word documents and I'll get them, get them organized and send them to you. But I urge you guys to do the same for yourself as a good practice. And I, I personally believe that these could help you uh, in your next classes, okay? But do allow some time for me to, to get that done. All right, so if you don't have any questions on log three, I have not. Professor, Professor, Professor would you please choose a couple of questions you think it might be useful for our next quiz? Uh, from this area, give us some idea of what type of question we prepare ourselves. Since nobody has question, you might just uh, volunteer to. Uh, typically, my quiz will be, I would draw questions from the homework and, uh, you know, sometimes I might just uh, put a multiple questions on one question on the quiz. And I certainly have, you have seen quiz number eight, number nine just out and they, they quiz you on the pictures and the points and so on and so forth, right? Yes, I, I meant the, when you ask, nobody had question in this regard, this concept here. Uh, if you want to reinforce the concept by a couple of more examples, uh, you can choose those examples. Oh, you want me to choose some? Yes, ma'am. Sure, I can choose that, some. That helps me for my okay. two purposes. I'm going to choose you. a couple. I'm going to choose a couple. Okay, for example, this is five log base. Five of a six, right? So in this situation, the general case will be fitting, right? The base is five, the base is five before logarithm, that's one, and the, the, the number at omega place is six. Therefore, the answer is what? The answer is six. You don't have to show a lot of work at all in these cases. Okay, you guys, you don't have to show much work at all, especially after you get into calculus class. You professor didn't need to see your, your deriving all of these things. You just have to know this is already, it's like a piece of cake for you. You just, just do it. Okay, so this is how much work you need to show. That's it. Do you follow me? Yes. Also, also, professor, you ask us to show that uh, equation b to the power of log b omega equals omega to show the work that could be considered show the work not just the answer six right the, the, this this proof is it's just a straightforward right this That's proof right. is just straightforward it's just substitution right uh, but, but you want a student show they know that that's where the six coming from using that equation you taught us. Right, I, I will give you a question like log three to, to see if you guys know. Very well. Right? And another one say such as E, right? You're gonna be using E a lot, okay? You're gonna be using this guy a lot. I mean, a lot. I mean, a lot. Do you guys understand what's me a lot, right? All right, so if you understand that, so, so if I have Ellen, Square root of three, what will be the answer? The square root of three. In less than two seconds. 100% correct. That's right, that's all you need to do. Okay, of course you need to be mindful of these identities, right? And these domain issues. Of course, you always, you know, being aware of domain is like your daily ritual. In, when you were in calculus class, sometimes you teach you 
your professor may not mention the domain, but you have already thought about domain. You have to. You have to. Okay. By the time you're in calculus class, your professor would assume you know everything we've talked about in this semester. And your professor would not have much time to review much of what, what do we do in this semester. Just to let you know, okay? He or she does not have much time to review these because there's so much material to cover in calculus. Do you guys understand? There are five chapters. There are five chapters, pretty heavy duty. And you have to have a specific specific way to learn it, okay? So now I want to leave. I I, uh, I think that's it. But one more. It's probably this guy e to the power of uh, ln of one over pi. I mean, I I, I put this question here. It's really just for the fun of it, right? To it just indicate no matter what it is no matter what is that omega is, as long as you make that match, okay? This match is made. It doesn't matter what that omega is, as long as the omega is positive in the domain of the logarithm. So whatever it is, now that whatever is one over pi, therefore the answer is one over pi. You guys see that? We have, pro we have proved it's true. We have demonstrated it's true from two different perspectives, and we just want you to get it and be able to do it, and that's all. And you don't need to memorize after you know how it's been derived. Okay, so now I want, I wish to take, uh, spend some time to answer your question at 42A. Okay, that was a new homework that were assigned to you. And oftentimes, I hear people ask me which page Number one, I really don't know the exact page of the version I send you. Number two, what I really want you to do is I want you to flip through the pages every single day. Okay? So I'm not intentionally not telling you the pages because I really don't know. Number two, accidentally, it coincides with my intention. I want you guys to flip pages every day, maybe pick up some questions to do every day. Okay, so that question, we're going to answer that question about basic 42A.